banana. Hey tubers, so I thought I'd do a quick video and I want to know what gets you going. Like what really get you going. And maybe I should phrase this as, what is the one thing that maybe you can't live without? Um, for me, it's music. It is absolutely, without a doubt, no question, music. Um, I have played instruments almost my entire life. My father was a jazz musician. He plays saxophone. Um, he started me on trumpet when I was in third grade. Um, I guess he was praying he'd have a little Louis Armstrong, although unfortunately, um, Trumpet really wasn't my passion. I enjoyed it, but it wasn't my thing. Um, but I played that for almost 10 years, and I was in marching band and concert band and youth symphony, and I was, um, I went to every honor band and, you know, set first chair in the, the South Carolina Youth Symphonic, whatever it was called, I don't even remember anymore. But, you know, so I did a lot of stuff with that. I did marching band, jazz band, pep band, tons of stuff. You know, later in high school, I um, switched to French horn and played that for two years. I played flugelhorn and marching band. Um, I learned to play um, basic flute and clarinet, um, and then I also taught myself guitar. So I love music. I love music. And if I could afford it, I would have tons of instruments. My next thing I want to learn is the oboe. I'm just in love with it. I don't, I don't know. I'm in love with the oboe, which is so weird. But anyway, so later on in high school, I started um, singing, and I did a lot of community theater. I did musicals, um, I did uh, show choir, I did concert choir, I did classical, like operatic um, choir. We had a classical choir. Um, and so I was doing that, and I was also doing drama club as well, and doing musicals with the high school. Um, and then in college, I started as a classical voice major with a musical theater emphasis, fell in love with musical theater more so than the classical aspect. Um, it was actually after I had just done, I sang tenor in La Boheme, and I was just done with it. I don't know, something about opera didn't really ring true with me. So I moved to musical theater, um, and then from musical theater learned about dance and really enjoyed dance, and then went on to that. But, the, but sort of the tie that binds is music. Music moves me. Music puts me in a headspace. It transports me. I mean, good chord structure feeds my soul and dissonance just makes me happy. I, there's, ugh, there's just something about good music. And I was thinking about the today at the gym. I, I don't move without music. I don't. I can't walk down the street without my iPod. I can't go to the gym without my iPod. And I notice a difference. Like, it really just moves me, even spiritually. There, there's music that I can listen to that immediately I am transported to a more meditative state. My memories are very tied to music. I can listen to, <laughs> this sounds awful, One Sweet Day, Mariah Carey and Voice to Man. I don't even like the song. Um, not too much anyways, but when I hear that, I immediately smell gasoline and spearmint Wrigley's gum. Because that's what my sisters listened to all the time when they drove me to school in their beat-up Volkswagen that smelled like, or excuse me, beat-up Volvo that smelled like gasoline, and they would stop at the gas station every morning and buy wintergreen gum. So I would, I, I, seriously, I hear that song, I smell those smells, I think of my sisters and the good time we had. I tell you, I listen to music and immediately... I, I see a place, and a mood, and a time, and a costume, and, and dance moves, and a feeling, and, and, you know, I'm just a freak about music. I have, I could go check for sure, but I know it's at least over 3,400, I think it's closer to 3,500 songs right now on my laptop. And I know every single one of them. And I could sing you the lyrics to every single one of them and a lot of it's Broadway, um, I love musical theater, but a lot of it isn't. I collect music like it's my job. I've had to upgrade iPods twice now because I can't hold enough on my iPod. <laughs> but I don't want to be a musician, I, I do want to be a dancer. Um, and then the second thing I want to talk to you about, and it's another question as well. So the first one, what drives you or what can't you live without? And the, the second one would be, um, how does your 
spiritual practice or spiritual beliefs influence or make better something about your mundane life. Um, for me, it's dance. Um, and, and I think that that's, you know, you think, oh, well, I don't get it, or like it doesn't seem like it fits, or whatever, but, you know, think about it. Dance has been a part of spiritual practice from the earliest cultures. Um, you know, Native Americans are, are so in touch with dance and spirituality, and we have the spiral dances, and we have dance of, you know, ancient Rome, and, and we have dance of the medieval period when it was, you know, the death devil and the fool, and, you know, all of these things are very tied to spirituality, and it wasn't until, really, Catholicism and the Catholic Church came in and started saying, you know, we're not like them, and we're not going to dance because we're not like them, that dance stopped having a spiritual aspect to it. And the way that I use my spiritual practice or my beliefs in my dancing is, well, other than just actually being in the, in, in the, the, the space, I think there's a space. I mean, I have, when things go right and it just is that good, I can come off stage and have no recollection of what I did. You go on stage, and this used to happen to me all the time, especially in marching band, um, things like that. You go on the field, you go on the stage. I remember the start, and I remember the finish. And everything else in between was just pure ecstasy. In, in class, um, class can be hard. I don't know if any of you have ever taken class as a dancer or been a dancer, but it's, it's almost the same exercise every day for years. You know, a plie is a plie, a tendu is a tendu. You know, you're not, you know, degage, whatever. It's the same stuff. You're doing it in different orders, but it's the same stuff every day. So you really have to delve deeper to find, you know, what muscles you're using, you know, what all this. So my, my visualization practice has really helped me. Visualizing what I want. Visualizing proper technique. Visualizing the floor. And, and I think it's so interesting, you hear teachers say a lot, you know, use the floor, feel the floor, dance with the floor, feel the energy around you, you know, it should look like energy is coming from your foot, you know, all these things. Well, they say that, but then I can go, yeah, yeah, it really is. And I think that's really helped me. And as soon as I realized this, you know, everything became better. You know, I struggled with my arabesque a little bit. And someone said to me, you know, think of it as if, as if energy is coming from your, from your foot, and then from your hand, and that it's cradling your body. And I thought, well, why do I have to pretend? Why can't it? Why, why can't I have energy that is cradling my body, that is, that is allowing me, that is sustaining me, and that is also projecting to the audience? And I swear to God, it was just instant that it changed, you know? Or doing pirouettes, you know, feeling... Rather than fighting the energy around me, an understanding of my spiritual practice and an understanding of energy and just being open and aware and looking around me taught me that I don't have to fight to do a pirouette. I'm not fighting gravity. I'm not fighting friction. I'm not fighting the floor. I just need to let it happen. I need to work with the energies around me and let it happen. So that's the two questions that I want to know. I want to know, one, what moves you? And two, how does your spiritual practice enhance a mundane or daily thing that you do, whether it be your profession or, or something different? So I'm really excited to see that. Um, I would love to see video comments. I love video comments. If not, just leave me a text, or a text comment. That's fine. Um, bye.